Okay. So, in this talk, we're going to consider separable differential equations, which are a particular type of differential equation. Okay. Uh, the form of a separable differential equation is like this. Y prime is a function of x times a function of y. Okay. Now, first of all, can you tell me what the order of this differential equation is, this format? It's the order. One. Okay. So, it's a first order differential equation. What's the degree? One. Degree is one because in terms of y prime, it's just a linear equation, y prime. Right? You already got y prime explicitly in terms of x and y. So, separable differential equations are a particular type of first order, first degree differential equation. But it's not necessary that any first order, first degree equation should be separable. Okay, so these are these are a further sort of particular case of first order, first degree differential equations. Okay, now these equations can always be solved. Well, when I say be solved, I mean they can be converted into integration problems. Okay. Uh, and of course, you may ask, can an integration problem be solved? And we know that integrals exist, but we may not be able to compute them explicitly. But in this case, the way you do it is, you start with this, dy dx with fx dy. You bring the gy down under the dy and the dx up here with the fx, and then you put integral signs. Okay? Okay. And then you solve. And these are both indefinite, but you put only one plus c. So you don't put the plus c on both sides, you just put a plus c on one side. Because even if you put plus c's on both sides, Sort of there those different C's you could take them, you could combine them into a single one. Okay? So only get a single plus C. Okay. Now after you have integrated this, you have got rid of Y prime, right? Now it's completely a relation between X and Y. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you haven't necessarily expressed Y as a function of X. It will be some relation between X and Y involving the parameter C. And in order to get it in a functional form, you may need to do some algebraic manipulation. Okay? So, you'll get a relational solution, a family of relational solutions. Okay? Because you have some, some expression in Y is equal to some expression in X. You haven't necessarily written Y directly as an expression in X. Okay. Now, there's another small note I want to make, which is that there could be some solutions which get missed out from this process. They're called stationary solutions. There'll just be a few, finitely many of them, so not a big deal if you miss them out, but they should, you, should, you can still note that they, they, are, they may be there. So stationary solutions are, are solutions where y is a constant function of x. And that constant satisfies that g of the constant is 0. So notice, if y is actually a constant function k where g k is 0, then it satisfies this, right? Mm -hmm. Derivative is zero because constant and plug in gets zero. So these solutions, these they may get missed out when you do this because sort of when you're doing this rearrangement, you're assuming that gy is non-zero, right? That's what's allowing you to mm -hmm. to rearrange like this. Okay, so so you have, you have to check for stationary solution separately, and if you can manage to combine them into the general solution, that's good. So the relational solution family plus the stationary solutions give you all solutions. Okay. So, I want to discuss two uh, special uh, situations here, okay? So, one is where you just have, have the function of y. So, you don't have, the fx is, is just 1. So, one special case is where y prime is just the function of, a function of y. Okay, so it's just g of y. Okay, so in that case, what happens? Well, in that case, you do the same thing, right? You solve it the same way, except now the, the x side, we know exactly what's happening, right? You'll get integral 1 dx, right? Mm -hmm. Which is just x plus c. And plus you have to include these stationary solutions. But the point is, in, in this situation, you actually manage to write exactly the inverse of what we want. You manage to get x as a function of y, right? When you integrate, you'll have 
some function of y is x plus e. So you got x in terms of y instead of y in terms of x. Mm -hmm. So in order to reverse things, you have to do basically invert a function, do function inversion. Okay. So this what what's significant about this form of equation? What what's the word for equations? What what's the type of equation which this is? Well, it's, I'm not asking what the order I think. So it's first degree, it's first order, first degree. But in addition, it's it's a what? Separable. Well, it's separable, but it's actually something strong, right? No, no, uh, it's. I don't know why you're asking. Well, it, it was some something with different equations which we were talking about in the previous video. Autonomous. Uh, autonomous. It's autonomous. Right. The independent variable x doesn't appear. By the way, if it doesn't get you didn't guess, uh, x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, right? So the independent variable doesn't appear anywhere in this. So this is actually a first order, first degree autonomous equal differential equation. Any first order, first degree autonomous differential equation essentially looks like that. Mm -hmm. Up to multipli up to some multiplication that theory. Okay, and so first order, first degree autonomous differential equations are separable. They are put the type of separable equation and they can be solved. Okay. Okay. What's another, what's the other extreme case where the function of y doesn't appear? So y prime is fx. Well, this is very easy to solve. Maybe you knew how to solve this even before doing differential equations, right? You just have y is integral fx dx. Uh, I could put the plus c here, but you could already get a plus c here, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Actually, you didn't have to put the plus c here, you would already get a c here, so it doesn't matter. This is just like saying find the antiderivative of f. Yeah. This is just indefinite integration. Mm -hmm. So this is a very basic type of thing. It's like, it's, it's like, uh, you just read word the operation. Okay. So, so this case we would have already had without knowing any more differential equations, but the general case is a little bit trickier as we saw. Okay. So now let's do a couple of uh, of examples. So let's do one example of a differential equation, uh, which is separable. So let's do dy dx is x squared plus one y square plus 4. So there are no stationary solutions here because y square plus 4 is never zero. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we just have to do the usual procedure. So what do you get? dy over? y square plus 4. Mm -hmm. Equals integral? Of x square plus 1 mm -hmm. dx. Okay. What does the, what is the right side to the right side? What does the right side become? x cubed over 3 plus x. Okay, let's put the plus c here, so you won't put it on the left side. Okay, what's the left side? Left side is arctangent. Well, it's something involving arctangent. Yeah? x over... Not x, y. Oh, y over 2. Mm -hmm. So is there a coefficient? Oh, 1 over 2. 1 over 2, good. Okay, and so this is the family of solutions. What does that mean? Well, it means that for every C that you plug in, you get a relation solution, okay? Now, uh, we could leave the answer like this, but if you wanted to, you could also try to write Y in terms of X. Now, you may lose some information in the process because you try to apply functions. So, what would happen if you tried to write Y in terms of X? What would you get? Uh, y equals to tangent. The two. Two tangent of two thirds x cubed hmm. plus two x plus c. Well, you could call this two c or new c if you want. So, mm -hmm. but it's just yet calling a convention here. Now, there's actually some kind of loss of information. I won't go into the details. Here, but yeah, that's how you solve this differential equation. Okay, and this. Uh, I mean, I, this is it's enough to get the general solution in this form. But if you want to write y in terms of x, you can. Okay. Uh, now, actually, you should notice that that if you actually, for a particular x, you can only vary x 
within a certain interval before this Y blows up, right? Because mm -hmm. Dan blows up at or Mark blows up by over two. So you actually wanted to do the analysis of what this how this actually behaved, it would be a lot mm -hmm. I'm just leaving you where here. But the thing is that, that getting this relational solution family is not really the full work. If you actually want to do an analysis, it would take a lot more effort. But we are right now, we're just illustrating the method. We are, we are not doing that work. Okay, let's do another example, which is, which we do a little more of. So, let's do it. a little longer. So, dy dx is x plus 1, y plus 1. So by the way, the examples I'm writing now, right now I'm already writing them in this form. But you may be given a, a differential equation which you can manipulate a bit and then bring in this form. Right? Okay. The, like you may have, you may have dy dx is something in x and y which you can factorize. But it's not given in factorized form. So you may need to manipulate a bit. Okay, good. So are there any stationary solutions? Yeah. What's a stationary solution? y equals to hmm? what constant? So what constant? That's a 1. Okay, good. Okay, let's let's rearrange and get the general solution. And we try to then write the general solution in a way that, that includes the stationary solution. So, okay, what happens here? You get natural log of y. Absolute value y plus 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you now you could leave the answer like this, but we are not satisfied. We want to write y in terms of x, right? Mm -hmm. So you exponentiate both sides. You get absolute value y plus one mm -hmm. is e to the e to the whole thing. So I'll take the e to the c out, the beginning times x. X is just my way of writing e to the, but I don't want to write a lot in the exponent. So when I want to write e to the something and that thing is huge, I typically write as an x for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want to get rid of this absolute value. So here's the trick. I put k as the sine of y plus one. So it's I this thing is either one or minus one, depending on whether y plus one is positive or negative. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, times e to the c. Now y plus one cannot change sign in between, right? Because it's it sort of cannot transition through zero. Right? So, so the sign is a constant. So this is actually a constant. And now you'll get y plus 1 is k times x of... So, so now I'm getting rid of this ambiguity about absolute value by pushing that into the constant. Mm -hmm. okay. So the sine times e to the c. Okay. Uh, so this is actually an algebraic manipulation to clean up your solution. If you wanted, you could leave it like this. This just isn't very clean and clear what's happening. Okay. So now... How do I get y in terms of x? y equals 0. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, minus 1. Okay, now, what's the constraint on k? Well, k is this sine thing, which is either plus or minus 1 times e to the c, which is positive. So k is non-zero, right? Mm -hmm. This is a constraint we have from, from the way we constructed it. Uh, but now we also have a stationary solution. What's the stationary solution? Y is minus 1. Mm -hmm. The stationary solution you could have thought of as getting just from this expression with k equal to 0, right? Mm -hmm. So now you can combine this family with the stationary solution. How would you combine? K can be anything. Yeah. So the overall, the general solution including the stationary solution is Y is k And the k equals 0 gives you the stationary solution. Now, many people uh, use the word general solution for this thing, even excluding the stationary solution, because that's just one thing to forget, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's fine. The, general, the term general solution can be used if you exclude a few stationary solutions. Uh, but you should just remember that, that there are stationary solutions. Sometimes it becomes important when you actually have to find a solve an initial value problem. If your initial value problem has the stationary solution as its answer, then you might miss it completely, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just good to know. And uh, and this and, and what we did from this point onward 
was just sort of algebraic manipulation, which you may or may not be able to do in other situations. So there may be circumstances where you are, there's no way of cleverly writing y in terms of x, and there's no way of combining the stationary solution into your thing. Okay. Okay. So that's, uh, okay.